with a mixture of shooting, depth, athleticism, and length that can only be matched by the Boston Celtics, the Oklahoma City Thunder look unstoppable. This OKC Thunder offense is not as complex as you may think, and when you sit here and look at this, this pick and roll where you have the MVP candidate, one of the leaders uh, in the MVP candidate race, and then you have Chet Holmgren, a guy who can roll and catch a lob on your face, or sit out and pop a three ball, it makes it so tough off rip, and you can do so many things off of it. Um, right here, Shea's just going to go attack downhill on Clint Capella and get the layup. He also had many options. I mean, if Reza Shea steps in, he's got the kick to Jalen Williams, who then can attack or shoot the three ball. You got Lou Dort, a 40% three-point shooter going to the corner, and then Aaron Wiggins, a guy that shot 49% from three, is going to come open here at the top. So many options here for Shea Gilgis Alexander, and it all stems out of this one pick and roll between he and Chet Holmgren. Once again, attacking this pick and roll, this Shea Chet pick and roll, which brings Capella up so far, and it, it's it's over for the Hawks, right? Because now you get you don't try to switch, but you have to switch because it's a good screen by Chet, and you also have to account for him on the pop right here. So like Dyson Daniels can't chase Chet or can't chase Shea because Chet is a threat to stop here and knock it down. You also have Isaiah Joe lifting. So in this case, he now has to switch and click Capella ends up guarding Shea Gilgis Alexander. And that is just not a good recipe for success. All right. So once again, we're going to get into this pick and roll. We're going to attack Dyson Daniels downhill with our best player and boom, he's too small. And Dyson Daniels is not a bad defender. I've been saying this the whole video, but nobody else can help because there's a good shooter in the corner. Kaysen Wallace, solid shooter. And then you got the dunker spot here. And nobody else can really help off because if they do, it's an easy layup. Like Isaiah Joe's in this corner. This guy can't help at all because Isaiah Joe is one of the best snipers in the league. People don't know it, but he is. And then you got Shea, who's just going to go right at Dyson Daniels and get the bucket. Thought it should have been an and-one. Having a guy like Shea, who is such an engine for you, is such a plus. Here he's just going to completely break down this defense. And Dyson Daniels is a great defender. But what the Thunder have done is they have so many guys that can shoot the ball. Jalen Williams, 43% from three last year. Lou Dort, 40%. Chet, close to 40%. Aaron Wiggins, like we said, 50% almost 50% from three and so Shea is just going to drive in against like I said Dyson Daniels a great defender collapse the defense so Capella has no clue where Chet is Trey Young has no clue where Aaron Wiggins is Reza Shea's walling off uh, Jalen Williams here but Lou Dort can now slide to the corner because this guy came to help so so many options for Shea as he breaks down this defense this time he's going to pump fake to Dort and hit Chet for the three ball and having a stretch big that can do that is so, so valuable in the modern NBA. And I mean, having a guy like this for head coach Mark Dagnall and the Thunder, a guy that can just break down the opponent's defense that, I mean, Dyson Daniels, great defender. And this is just on an island, little hip bump, half spin, fade away, pure butter. And like we said, neither of these guys can come to help because they'd be leaving 40% three-point shooters. you got... Case on Wallace in the dunker spot, so Jalen Johnson can't step up too much. And then Onyeka is over here with Usman Jiang, who's not the greatest shooter in the world, but just opening up like all of this space on Shea Island. And he's just gonna he's gonna make a pay. You can't guard him like that. Uh, even if it is Dyson Daniels, who's a great defender. He's he might be the MVP. Shea was absolutely cooking in the first quarter here against or first half against the Hawks he was really the only one doing anything but look at the amount of separation he creates on this step back right here I know it's Clint Capella but still that is a big time step back lets him get into a shot really easily and it's all net Aaron Wiggins is a guy to watch for this year right as a starter he's been starting for OKC lately and this isn't the craziest move in the world it's just a pump fake and then a step back but a guy that can do this having this guy alongside of Shea Jalen Williams even Caruso who's been running with the bench guys here and letting Wiggins start it is so so nice it's such a luxury to have pump fake step back knocking it down can really shoot the ball and then just the depth of the thunder I mean you got AJ Mitchell here coming in off the bench not many people know who this guy is, I'm not going to lie, and just kicks it out. Isaiah Joe knocking down the three ball. You got depth rotation pieces that can drive and kick. 
really reminiscent of the Boston Celtics and what Joe Mazzulla and them have built over there. And then this is the importance of adding in a guy like Alex Caruso. These, This is two very high IQ veteran plays by Caruso in one here. A uh, two-for-one package deal, if you will. Right, so first, as Aaron Wiggins is driving, you see Trey Young, his eyes are looking right at Aaron Wiggins, which is a little bit of a no-no, right? You gotta, you gotta be able to see both, so... Caruso cuts right back door, that forces him to help, and now you've got Lou Dort moving without the ball, like a good experienced veteran, right? He First off, he could have hit, hit the kick to Isaiah Joe, but Lou Dort moves without the ball, you hit the back door cut, and without thinking, immediately, straight to Lou Dort, who has become a pretty solid three-point shooter for this Thunder team over time. And hey, shout out to Mark Dagnall for bringing back the dunker spot here with Jalen Williams, right? So, we got a pick and roll here happening with Lou Dort for Shea. And normally, in the modern NBA, you got just all five guys spread around the perimeter. But you got Jalen Williams here, short corner. They're going to skip it to him, rip through, chin up. Easy money. And like I said, that's something new that Mark Dagnow and the Thunder are implementing. I mean, traditionally, if you're going to have a guy in the short corner, it's going to be a post. But, once again, Chet Holmgren, one of the most versatile guys in the league out of the three-point line. So now, you can have Jalen Williams there who can catch, rip through, and go do a chin-up on the rim. He's also a great cutter, too. And people forget, you know, all the talk goes to Shea and Chet, but Jalen Williams was one of the best young wings in the league last year, right? So, you got a pick-and-roll up here with Caruso. Reza Shea fights through pretty well, so Shea just decides not to use it, and he's going to attack the lane. Trey Young gives up on the play. Not great defense. Dyson Daniels slides in. Uh, Roddy slides in. You got both guys here sli sliding in. So normally in the modern NBA, Jalen Williams, you're thinking three ball. Instead, he's thinking, let me get on that rim once again. And here comes Shea with the lob. He could have hit Chet as well. Now, I'm not sure if Jalen Williams did this um, on his own or if Mark Dagnall targeted this rookie here, but right out of the half, we got a set play drawn up, right? So we got a stagger screen to get your MVP candidate the ball with Lou Dort and Wiggins setting this down screen, both these down screens, and then Shea popping to the ball. You got Chet up here making the pass. Um, so as this happens, right, as this happens on the backside, Chet's going to rip through. Reza Shea's thinking, oh, this is coming to me. Jalen Williams is going up, and then he cuts straight back door for the dunk. Jalen Johnson's occupied. Dyson Daniels is trying to get through. There's absolutely no help, which makes me think this was a drawn up backdoor play. But like I said, all this stuff happening on the other side of the play, Jalen Johnson is distracted and it's an easy dunk for Jalen Williams. And then boom, this is what you love to see, right? The Thunder actually go really small right here. It's an interesting lineup thrown out there by Mark Dagnall, but look at the defense on the perimeter, right? We got Case on the wall. This is what you love to see. Absolutely love it. AJ Mitchell's right there on Dyson Daniels. You've got Lou Dort, great perimeter defender. Case Wallace, look at him getting low, great perimeter defender. Shea averages close to two steals a game. Alex Caruso, great perimeter defender they brought over in the offseason. They've gone small, and they're getting... Active hands, poking it away. Now, Dyson Daniels makes a heck of a play right here to swat this, but this is fantastic defense. Just throttling up Trey Young and getting it, turning him over. We're going the other way into the front court. Beautiful stuff. And this is something else we got to talk about defensively. Chet looks like the depoy early on. I mean, look at this. Just being able, first he's going to go up and help on this dribble handoff, right? So this looks like a dribble handoff to Jalen Johnson, who's going to be coming off attacking this open space, right? So Chet's going to help. Then he's able to change directions and still make up and recover to block this shot by Nyeka Okongwu. Very good stuff from Chet Holmgren here. Depoy worthy, at least early on. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy at any point. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.